This is going to be a look at some Patrick Queen film. Of course, he played a lot against the Jets in week one. I think he played every snap, 84 snaps, if I remember correct. Um, a, a title of the video, Evolution, because I think I see some clear markers that he's taking to the new defense that, that's being uh, set up by uh, Mike McDonald. And I think I think he's got similar responsibilities in some cases. He seems to be communicating more pre-snap. Um, he definitely seems way more decisive. I do have two examples in here of plays where I think he's uh, somewhat out of position, but I think he's really adapting well, and I think Patrick Queen's, you know, set up for a really good season. I love um, how decisive he is, and I think it's, you know, the natural speed and explosiveness that he already has. When you're more decisive, you're going to look even faster. So let's get into the plays here. This first one I think is the first play of the game, and initially on first watch, I thought that he did something wrong here. This is a this is something that certain 3-4 teams do, and I'm not sure that we are... By the way, you know, the, the breakdown here is Marcus Williams. Uh, Josh Bynes fits this, you know, where he should in terms of the way the players ended up. The, the running back recognizes that and then bounces it outside, and Marcus Williams needs to press this more and not worry. It seems to me as if Marcus Williams is holding up here because he's worried about the back going inside so he's thinking about folding inside not recognizing that he's got binds there this is marcus williams uh breakdown if you ask me but to the extent that patrick queen plays this this is interesting some three four teams on run to one side or the other will wrong arm with the front side guy especially if you're getting a strong safety rolling up to your side now i know you guys are running out of screen over there on that side but the point let me get some of these lines out of the way the point is if if williams is going to be here on the outside some three four teams will have the front side inside linebacker wrong arm stuff and then what that allows is it allows the backside linebacker to fast flow it over the top so there is essentially exchanging responsibilities as opposed to the front side inside linebacker you know, setting everything inside with his inside shoulder to keep his outside arm free. Some 3-4 teams do this. Um, University of Miami used to do this. Just just wrong arm it is, is all it is. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what's happened here because I haven't seen us do the whole lot of that, but that's what it looks like. Second play, and some of these are run plays and pass plays that are mixed up, to be honest with you. Queen and Bynes communicating pre-snap. This is what you typically see out of him Very re in pass drops. Very reactive to the quarterback. I don't see him or Bynes look out to the uh, receivers to either side, but I'm going to show you some other reps where Bynes is, I mean, excuse me, Queen is very aware of the routes that are happening around him, and he's very aware of his responsibility in pass drops. I think he's, I think he's improved significantly in that area. Uh, usually you would see Bynes look out to the um, – to the side to see, look at the receivers, and, and in this case, he didn't either. All right, so this is a man situation. I think he's manned up on the back. Pre-snap communication between him and whoever the corner is that's over here guarding this tight end. I want to say it's Stevens, but I could be wrong. And he, he being queen, communicates something to Stevens. I think he's communicating to him, hey, I recognize that we've got a tight split. And Stevens is saying something to him also. That's why Queen is looking. I think they're saying, hey, we're going to go ahead and stay locked on here when these guys switch like this. And, they, and they're anticipating that switch because of how tight, tightly aligned this tight end is on the same side as the running back. Hopefully that makes sense. There's definitely some advancement in communication and, and his coverage ability, if you ask me. Uh, we get a pass interference call there. Or excuse me, that was a... Um, Illegal contact downfield on um, on Marlin down here that gave the Jets their first third down, first first down, I believe. But I think Queen looks better in coverage, and we're going to need him to be covering uh, running backs in man. It, it seems like, especially on third down, the Ravens are going to play more man than on first and second down, that is. Queen seems to be fitting some of this stuff really well. I like that he's staying a lot more square now. There were times in the in the past where he wasn't square so much. He would turn his hips and not be able to redirect one way or the other. And this way he's square, and he's able to redirect and jump back inside when a running back commits. Queen walked up here. I think he's going to drop out. Now this is, okay, so this is the second effort where he gets the quarterback hit. And again, I love how they're using him. They're not blitzing him all the time. But they're definitely using him as part of this five-man blitz where we're dropping Odafe Owe and we're bringing Marlon Humphrey off the edge. In my opinion, 
this is Queen is doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing here. He's supposed to occupy the center initially. I don't think he's trying to quote win to one side or the other at first. I think he's being told to occupy the center, and I think that's all being done to try to get one on ones over here for Michael Pierce and Justin Houston. I think the design of this is such that Queen is. It's not that he's being told, hey, don't try to get to the quarterback. He's trying to get to the quarterback, but that is not an advantageous thing for Queen to do against a starting center in the NFL, just try to bull rush him. In any case, his second effort is awesome. Uh, and, you know, Flacco does a great job and is able to get the ball out there to Garrett Wilson, who almost picks up the first down. Queen here, and Bynes is off the field. So we're in our three safety, three corner look, I believe. And the Jets attacked us to the flats often, to the right flats, the right of the offense. Looks like to me, Queen is supposed to be, and this is somewhat new, to be honest with you. It looks like to me, uh, Clark is on the tight end, Queen is on the running back, Humphrey is on the slot receiver, and then as you get motioned by Barrios, who is the slot receiver, Humphrey's going to, let me get rid of these lines, Humphrey's going to slide into the box and settle, and Queen goes and he's responsible for Barrios. That's somewhat new for us. It might be just a particular coverage, but it happened often. And you can see Queen's put in a little bit of conflict here because there's a run action with the back and Flacco having a mesh, and you've got a pulling guard, number 78. Queen has to kind of honor that. And then once he recognizes it's not given, he takes off to the running back. I mean, the one thing I would say is, like, I think he handled that pretty well for it being a, a run action play and then throwing it out into the other flats on the other side of the field, I'd say he handled that pretty well. You guys let me know what you think. This is the same play from the end zone angle, or excuse me, from the all 22. So there's Barrios going to go in motion. Here is Queen. And I think there's, there's, I believe that Clark is manned up on the tight end and you would have, you know, man here, even though that's an inside technique. So that looks like it's set up to, to play zone, to be honest with you. Clark is definitely manned on the tight end. I'm rewinding, I'm running this back a couple times to confirm for myself that it is man. Yeah, I mean, we definitely look like we're in man here. We're in off man here, and I guess this is off man here, but that certainly looks like a zone drop by Fuller. Queen is running out into the flats to Barrios. They attacked us here probably four or five times in the game, and I thought Queen looked like he was pretty quick there with his acceleration and um, and his ability to get out into the flats. Same situation. And I feel like that's a lot of space for him to cover. Now, this is somewhat different because the guy in motion is going across, so he's vacating the area that Queen ends up having, having to cover. So you got a guy going in motion across, and they didn't switch it this time, meaning it's not like Queen went with the man in motion and, and this guy took over the running back. They're asking Queen to run all the way out into the flats. I just feel like it's a long way to go, especially because Harrison is on that side already, closer to the running back. But that's just that's just the way they're calling it, it seems like to me. It seemed like Harrison was assigned to blitz. Queen had the running back. That's a long way to go to cover. I mean, PFF or grading services might say, like, that's a catch allowed. That's a hell of a long way to go to cover. You know, when you think about where the running back is lined up in between the hashes, and Queen is a yard outside the hash with his with his inside foot. And he gets there pretty quickly. I don't know that he could do any better than that. I don't know that anyone could do any better than that, for real. I mean, that's, that's going to be a completion uh, 100 times out of 100, or it should be. Queen here looks like our, uh, our nickel defense, because now Bynes is on, but we're in a four-man line. I like that he's being given some run action. Again, I think the guard is pulling. So he's getting the guard pull and the running back cross Flacco's face. So he's definitely being influenced to go in this direction. Like he's going to be one back power to that side. And then you've got the classic, you know, tight end over route going the opposite way. This is what the Ravens run, except we don't run it from an inline tight end position. And Queen does a nice job of getting in that window. And I think Flacco's going there. I'll try to slow this up for you. I think Flacco's going there to that tight end number 83. I think that's Conklin. In the past, uh, Queen, would he play it like this? Uh, yeah, but there was times where Queen was a little bit more 
easily manipulated by play action stuff. Um, so definitely looks like he's in the right spot a lot in this game, if you ask me. Um, this ends up being a sack. Does this sack happen if Queen is not un fitting underneath of this tight end? I'm not sure. So you let me know what you think. I think he's played very well against the Jets. Um, I don't know what the stats indicate, to be honest with you. I haven't even, I mean, I, I put the stats in my reaction video, but I don't have them memorized for real. But I feel like I'm seeing a guy who's evolving. And let's not forget, he's 23 years old, if, if memory serves. That's incredibly young for a guy who's in his third NFL season. Third season as a starter, mind you. Again, covering out into the flats against Barrios. Pretty good tackle. I think that was a second down, so it's not like that's third down and that's a stop. There's a lot going on with, with this motion stuff, and you see that Marcus Williams is definitely pointing. So I'm not sure if Marcus Williams is stepping into the box and taking over this back, and then Queen's got to take over Barrios, the guy in motion. That's somewhat new for us. Um, we would typically run with it, you know, in, in previous years under Wink Martindale. Like, if Williams was supposed to guard him man, let's just say, Williams would run with him, and I don't, su I don't suspect that Williams is necessarily supposed to take him man. I think Williams is taking over the low hole area, <clears throat> the area between the hashes, 8 to 10 yards deep or so. I think Queen's reaction was pretty good on a lot of these. Now, this one, there's going to be two here that I'm unsure about. I'm not unsure about him and this point at this point uh, on this run play. This is a one inside linebacker look. Not a huge fan of these looks. I've said that many times on my channel. I think Owe doesn't get into his gap here. I mean, Bynes fights off the block. Uh, Bynes is here. Queen is lined up with Owe over this side. I think as the as these offensive linemen move this way and the tight end, I think Owe is supposed to be in this gap, and he doesn't get there. I'll slow this down. I don't think Owe gets into the gap he's supposed to be in. I think Queen is fine in terms of what gaps he's, he's supposed to be in. You can see that Owe and Queen end up in the same gap. I think Owe was supposed to be stunting or moving a little quicker to get inside of this tight end gap, which, of course, is where the ball ends up. So in no way, shape, or form do I think this is Queen's fault. He's just not, he's not in position to make a play by alignment. And that's, you know, that's what his coach is telling him to do in terms of where he was lined up on that play. Now, this one is uh, one where I do think he's put himself out of position, but I, I, I don't know who has, the, who has the back here because Marcus Williams is blitzing, okay? And Flacco ends up scrambling around the edge. Houston is a B-gap player. Calais Campbell seems to be running a pick. So I'm a little unsure of what's happening here. Part of me thinks that Queen is responsible for the back, and Houston is supposed to take this guard out, and then Campbell's looping around, which would put Campbell on QB contain. QB contain is the guy who's supposed to keep the quarterback inside the uh, inside the pocket. That that could be it. And that would fit with how Queen reacts to this. Once the back crosses Flacco's face, Queen kind of comes here and then starts to run this way. Initially, when I looked at this, I thought Queen's got to be off that edge. I'm just not sure. He's He appears to be connected to the back who went to block Marcus Williams. But let's just for a moment just talk about, you know, if Queen had stayed in this outside gap, he's got a sack. You know, now, responsibility-wise, it appears as if he's connected to this running back, and that's why he left or betrayed that C-gap. Hopefully that makes sense. But if that's the case, we have to be running some kind of pick with Campbell and Houston because otherwise we have no C-gap player, and that's just not sound. We have a C-gap player by alignment, but we don't have a C-gap player by rush. And you can see, even against an old man like Joe Flacco, that's not sound. All right, back to the first play. You guys let me know what you think. If uh, if Queen looked improved to you, I think he, I mean, based on what we saw last year at the beginning of the season when Rob Ryan was the inside linebackers coach and Queen's job was, you know, I thought even more simplistic last year, I think he's taking to multiple assignments, multiple responsibilities very well. And in, in you know, three of the cases in this video that I've mentioned to you and tried to explain to the best of my knowledge, I think Queen is having a really, really tough cover. 
you know, those covers on Berrios out in the flats or the running back out in the flats, particularly that one where there was the run action and then Berrios was running the swing route out in the flats, that's a, that's a tough cover. That's a tough cover, and I think Queen has handled it well. To me, he looks like he's played at a really high level in this game. They really trust him because they're asking him to do a lot. He's a part of the coverage element often. We do, in this video, appear to be playing um, more man than zone. I'm not sure what the breakdown is you know, from the game, but it seemed like first and second down we were in a lot of like match zone stuff, and third down we were playing man. And that's, you know, that's kind of typical of a lot of defenses. I think McDonald will, will be uh, unpredictable, though, in that way. I, I think by game, it will depend on the, on the team, the matchups, and the situation as to whether we're playing more zone or man, you know, in early downs versus the third down situations. Let me know what you think of my breakdown, what you think of Patrick Queen's play. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm late with this one as compared to a lot of other people. I've seen stuff pop up on YouTube. Um, on Wednesdays, I tried to basically put out videos of one play stuff from across the NFL and the Ravens. And uh, check those out if you get a chance because it seemed like yesterday nobody wanted to watch them. They're basically me looking at uh, particular players and plays, I should say, from across the NFL and, and checking out how people execute schemes and how defenses try to try to match up and contain certain schemes um, and, and hopefully try to give some understanding as to certain things, um, how they end up being you know 12-yard gains as opposed to you know, an incomplete pass, whatever. Let me know what you think of Patrick Queen and my breakdown in the comments section. If you think other people might like this video, please consider sharing it on social media.